Hello, this is part 54 of our comparative Bible study on the beginning of Jesus' Galilean ministry. During this part, we would like to talk about those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Overall, this is our 94th New Testament Bible study. During the three previous Bible studies, we discussed the word righteousness. As a brief recap, I've proposed that the word righteousness can be looked at as being in a state or status of being right. I've mentioned, at least in some places, that the New Living Translation has used the word right standing. And this is very intriguing to me because right standing sounds like good standing. A person in good standing for a license or something like that is in compliance has all their dues paid and all their training taken. So maybe a person in right standing or righteousness is someone who is all caught up in compliance, not owing anything. And it appears that there are two ways to be in this status of righteousness or right standing. One is righteousness with the law by perfectly following the law, which only the Lord Jesus could do, and the other being the righteousness of God without the law, which we're told in Romans chapter 3, by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So that appears to be the two choices. The latter, the one we just read about, which is the Jesus option, the righteousness of God without the law, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, and then the former one, the righteousness by the law, perfectly following the law, and who can do that because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So only Jesus could possibly do that. That is, Jesus is the only one who could live up to this standard. We cannot do it ourselves. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why we can't live up to the righteousness by the law standard and why we need this other standard the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. That is, the righteousness of God without the law. But there appears to be some, including the Pharisees, who believed that they could be sinless or in a state of right standing by following the law, probably not realizing that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why we need the Lord Jesus. Two Bible studies ago, I presented Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, which will come up again later in the Sermon on the Mount. There it appears the Lord Jesus is indicating that a righteousness greater than that of the scribes and Pharisees who very strictly followed the law, was required to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And I put forth that the righteousness of God without the law, which is the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, is this righteousness that exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Of course, them, as we discussed earlier, trying to follow the righteousness by the law, by trying to perfectly follow the law and become in right standing that way. So it seems this righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees is not good enough to enter into the kingdom of heaven, but this other righteousness that exceeds it the righteousness of God without the law that I've put forward here is good enough to enter into the kingdom of heaven. At least that's the way it seems to me anyway. As stated by the Lord Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 verse 20, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
During the last Bible study, I presented that the word righteousness in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, when Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount, that probably a lot of people thought he was speaking of righteousness by following the law. But I propose that maybe Jesus was foreshadowing about the righteousness of God without the law in this verse. Here it states, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. During this Bible study, I would like to propose that in Matthew chapter 5 verse 10, which is a little bit later, that when the Lord Jesus speaks of righteousness here, many probably thought he was speaking of righteousness by the law, but I'd like to propose, as I did with Matthew chapter 5 verse 6, that Jesus was speaking of righteousness of God without the law. Matthew chapter 5 verse 10 states, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There are two reasons at least that I believe could show that this righteousness spoken of in Matthew chapter 5 verse 10 is the righteousness of God without the law. First, the righteousness spoken of in Matthew chapter 5 verse 10 indicates later on in that verse, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. As mentioned earlier in this Bible study, my hypothesis that the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees being the righteousness by the law cannot get us into the kingdom of heaven. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the righteousness that exceeds that righteousness, the righteousness of God without the law, it can be used to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Accordingly, since Matthew chapter 5 verse 10 appears to be speaking of righteousness in conjunction with the kingdom of heaven, to me, therefore, it seems to be indicating that this is the righteousness of God without the law. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Next, the righteousness of God without the law as we basically stated earlier, is the option of righteousness where we need the Lord Jesus. In the very next verse, in Matthew chapter 5, after verse 10, the Lord Jesus states, For my sake. So here in these verses, it appears to me that the Lord Jesus is talking about being persecuted for his sake, the sake of the Lord Jesus. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So couldn't the Lord Jesus here be talking about being persecuted for a righteousness or a status of right standing which comes about from him, the righteousness of God without the law, which is the status of right standing by faith of Jesus Christ. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Let's stop here for now. Lord willing, maybe we'll have another Bible study in the future. If I got to share anything good, it's a blessing from God.